We're going to move on now uh, to hear in more detail about the DLAN project from some of uh, those directly involved in it. Uh, first of all, Hervé Le Guillardet from Aquitaine in France, my former boss, Boos, um, is going to tell us uh, about what he's found and present the findings the outputs of the project, he's been acting as, uh, as an assessor. And then we're going to hear from Rimantas Gatautis and Radek Bejak, I hope I say it more or less correct. He's over there somewhere, no, um, never mind. Uh, who are gonna tell us a little about their experiences? Uh, Rimas and uh, Radek, do you want to come up and sit here? <coughs> Thanks a lot, Gareth, for introducing me. Uh, I, I never was, I couldn't be his boss. This guy can't be uh, managed, so I wasn't his boss. I was, happened to be the president of ERISA uh, for a few years. Now, in this particular setting, I, uh, I feel like a fairly strange creature in this ecosystem because I, I'm not a partner of DLAN. I was uh, kindly asked by the, uh, by the, the the Welsh Assembly to give uh, a little bit of help as an independent reviewer to uh, maybe iron out a few uh, bits here and there. Uh, being an alien myself, sometimes it also helps, not English, uh, native language that is, it's always helpful to have a, an alien view on documents that are being written by non-native languages. Uh, and I also maybe should add that I do from time to time uh, evaluations and reviews for the European Commission. So this is really why the, um, the, the, the Welsh Assembly uh, asked me to give them a, a little bit of help on this uh, particular uh, closure of the project. So I'm, I'm here to present rapidly the DLAN project final outcomes. Uh, and this is how my name is spelled. And Le Guyadère is not even French, it's from Brittany, it means weaver in your language. So I'm Harvey Weaver. So this is quickly uh, the way I intend to um, use the next 15 to 20 minutes, a uh, fairly uh, logical presentation. Uh, I was not, I had not seen um, uh, Martina's presentation before uh, this uh, particular meeting, but uh, I hope there's not too much overlap between what she said and what I will say in a little while, I don't think so. The, uh, this is, of course, a very special day today, 18th of October. That's uh, Dylan's final conference. So this is some, something to celebrate. And this is the, the, the day where we launch um, a few key deliverables. Some of them, I mean, uh, the uh, good practice guide, you had it in your uh, briefcase. The, uh, the other two, which, will, which I will present, will be, that's another creature from the ecosystem, a fly. Uh, the, the other two, which I will pr uh, present later on, uh, I understand will be found on the uh, website as soon as tomorrow. So uh, again, DLAN is an Interact 4C project. So what it means, and uh, Martina touched upon it uh, a little while ago, uh, there's a, a very fierce competition uh, when you apply for a, an Interact 4C. She gave the the numbers for the, for the whole program, but I, I looked at um, what Dylan had to fight through in order to be selected for, for funding, and uh, uh, they were, for this particular call, uh, 398, um, 96, sorry, uh, proposals, and Dylan was one of the 18 uh, lucky winners. So that's in itself uh, a testimony to the uh, resilience of the, of the partnership. And to me, that's the first uh, demonstration of why this particular gang, this particular uh, consortium, uh, is a good example of a digital, digital ecosystems uh, in the making. They were able to uh, design, in a collaborative fashion, a proposal that uh, made it through the, through the uh, uh, competition process. So uh, that's something to be, uh, to be said once again. Uh, for those who would like to know more about the Interact 4C, uh, when I did my preparation, uh, I, of course, went to the Interact 4C uh, website, and I, I saw a few things which I thought were, were fa fairly clever. This is a quiz. They, they launched, they, they closed it uh, two days ago, a quiz on uh, what is Interact 4C all about, and uh, I don't know what the winners will, will win, maybe a Dylan 
a good practice guide, I don't know, but I thought that was a fairly interesting way to, uh, to get people uh, knowledgeable about what, in essence, is uh, always a little bit un difficult to understand. What are the rules of a, of a project? What are the, uh, the main questions that one should know the answers of before uh, bothering answering a, a replying to a, to a call? Another interesting point which I found in, on this website and which I strongly encourage you to take a look at, uh, they have a good practice, good practice database and I can't wait for seeing Dylan featuring uh, uh, in very high profile in this good practice database. I had the curiosity to uh, give the word uh, ecosystem as a query and much to my surprise, uh, there were nine entries, so already, uh, like that on Sunday, so on Sunday you had nine uh, good practices dealing with um, ecosystem on this particular uh, database of Interact 4C. One of them happening to be th th the third line, the third one here, Living Lab, a real life powerful helix, so you have partners in uh, Living Lab life, uh, Remanta. So uh, that's what the, uh, the product is about. Uh, nine partners initially, I'm saying initially because like in real life, uh, you have casualties along the way, so I understand now it's no longer nine, but rather seven. Uh, I won't name the ones who uh, dropped out, but this little map also shows you uh, uh, the interactions between, between these, these partners, because once again, even if it's called a digital ecosystem, uh, the, uh, it's, it's all about interaction, uh, exchange, uh, lessons learned from your mistake and from your partner's mistakes. So this is the list of the, of the nine partners who uh, built initially this uh, uh, winning proposal. So uh, congratulations to, to all of them. Now, uh, DLAN is about digital ecosystems. I don't know about you, but uh, when I told my wife I was working on uh, ecosystem numérique, she, she, she thought I was, I mean, even worse than what she thought I was. Uh, and indeed, that's a fairly intimidating expression, not for us geeks, but for real people. So it's always interesting to take a look at what Wikipedia has to say. On, uh, on, on things like, like this. Uh, so this is fairly uh, uh, rapid. I thought it was amusing to read the last sentence. The term is used in the computer industry, the entertainment industry, and the World Economic Forum. To associate entertainment and World Economic Forum to me was an interesting uh, twist. But uh, there's a lot of literature uh, on digital ecosystems. A uh, lot of thesis, a lot of very uh, arcane uh, and interesting mind-challenging uh, articles and theories. You get even images uh, depicting what ecosystems are, are, are about. So some of them are, are fairly uh, romantic, some of them are, are more uh, intimidating, and this one is my favorite, of course. Uh, uh, I don't know, uh, but this is what you know. Sometimes people put as as an explanation, as an il illustration uh, of a of a difficult concept. Well, once again, uh, DLAN is not a uh, FP8 or FP7 uh, uh, framework program uh, project uh, that claims or, or attempts to push uh, state of the art. Uh, either in technology or in uh, economic sciences. It's not about that. It's an Interact 4C project. And uh, to, to, again, to, uh, to repeat what Martina says and to, to quote one of the main uh, objectives that shows on the, on, on, on the website, uh, the, the, the idea is to improve the effectiveness of regional policies and instruments. So, and doing that by learning, by sharing experience, doing that by, by implementing solutions uh, on the ground. So um, DLAN indeed is about digital ecosystems. Indeed, it uses uh, web services. Indeed, it, it uses all sorts of technical technologies, uh, digital technologies, sorry. Uh, it makes great use of free open software. Um, uh, but it's not pretending, not even trying to push state of the art on these particular issues. Other projects, and I will go back to that at the end of my presentation, other initiatives will be doing that. And hopefully, uh, the, the son of Dylan will take advantage of, of uh, these new um, um, forays into uh, 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 state, state of the art. So this is what uh, the product says. It is a 
preliminary definition of ecosystem. I, I don't need to read this aloud. You can read it by, by yourself. But I think the, the most important, uh, and that's maybe the, the only message that's uh, uh, key here, um, Dylan is about delivering, delivering uh, tangible uh, tools, tangible um, elements that can actually help regions, all sorts of regions, not only UK regions, not only French regions, but regions all over Europe, uh, help them uh, implementing their own digital ecosystem, whether it's business oriented, whether it's public uh, office oriented, whether it's you know, both. And the reason why uh, one can make that bold claim is that I hope it's uh, demonstrated by the, by the deliverable, by the three documents I will be uh, briefly uh, uh, showing um, in a little while. Uh, these tools, these elements, these um, outcomes that Dylan is delivering today uh, are not theoretical components. They have been field tested. They have been, uh, you know, used by real people, uh, not PhD scientists, not um, economic professors, by real people like, well, I mean, he's, he's a PhD, but uh, <laughs> they have been really tested uh, underground by real people, real agencies, which also mean that they had to face, in their deployment, they had to face the real difficulties that you face when you're in the real life, that is, you work for, a, for local government, well, guess what? There are ele elections. And maybe your boss, the one who wanted you to work on a DE, uh, the new boss is no longer that much interested in that. So you had to convince twice, the first one, then the second one. So all of these tools have gone through uh, that process of what I call resilience, uh, m making a difference on the ground with real people, real SMEs, uh, with their own agenda, their own challenges. So that's what Dylan delivers. A, a road a deployment roadmap, uh, which we'll go over in in in, in little while, which is a step by step, uh, very uh, uh, logical uh, approach for uh, any. It's not a one size fits all, but it's a deployment uh, roadmap that uh, actually worked in all of the regions, and which I'm I'm pretty convinced will work in any any other uh, setting. And then uh, a set of of tools, adaptable tools. Uh, again, that have been field tested and designed by real users. So again, today is a day to celebrate, that's for sure. Uh, the, the, the three documents, Dylan Good Practice Guide, Implementation tool Toolkit, and the summary of the final regional reports. There will be other uh, documents that will be uh, made available, but these are the three most important ones. Once again, the first one, you had it in your briefcase. The other ones will be online tomorrow, together with uh, Annex. And so uh, the first one, the one that you have in your, in your, brief, in your brief, briefcase, has a very, um, uh, very specific uh, uh, objective. The, if something works in region A, how could it work in region B and region C? So the key objective is to look at uh, the reasons why something will be transferable, will be resilient to other uh, contexts. So the document goes over uh, the process that was uh, used by the, by, by the, by the partners. Uh, they had access to not a plethora, but quite a large group of uh, so-called good practices, either coming from their own uh, context, the, 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 the regions, uh, partners of the, of the product, but also from other EU projects. You will find in, your, in, a, in the in different documents a list of EC co-funded projects dealing with uh, uh, digital ecosystems, uh, which were uh, found by the partners uh, containing good practices. So they, they had this corpus of good practices to, to, to look at and then among themselves decide uh, which ones would, 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 would make sense to, uh, to be uh, uh, tested in their, in their own region. And that, that whole process took a little while. I mean, uh, you saw the, the arrows on the map, so there was a lot of, uh, of communication, uh, electronic and also physical, tangible uh, communication between, between the, the members, until such time where they were able to select, after a long and strong and uh, stringent process of selection, uh, of selecting six 
at an initial um, bunch of 18 cases uh, of the project seats, only six survived uh, and were selected for implementation on their uh, particular uh, region. So you, you have a few details and you, will, you have much more, of course, information in the booklet, but this is the, 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 the way the, um, I mean, a previous presenter show us you know, high, um, beehives and, and termites. I uh, won't insult them by comparing them to termites, but there was a lot of termite-like activity within the partnership to make all these decisions, to make this selection based on uh, objective uh, uh, evaluation uh, criteria. So six pilots were selected for, fun for, not for funding, for implementation in the, in the different regions. So here you have the the, the, the title of, uh, of the various uh, pilots. So the one in Wales, the one in Lazio, uh, Italy, uh, the, uh, the next one in Piemonte, still Italy, uh, Extremadura, Spain, uh, Connacht University, that's Lithuania, and then uh, the e-crime project um, in, the, in the Czech Republic region of uh, Vizocina. So these are the, 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 the six pilots which were actually tested uh, in, in real, uh, in, in real life situation. The, um, the way the document is, is structured, because uh, we try to make it again as usable and as legible as possible, even if it's not multilingual, uh, still I believe that, well, except you can't read, hmm, <laughs> not too good of a picture, but I mean, the, um, we, 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 we did everything we could to make these documents, the three of them, as usable as possible, even by non uh, you know, English native uh, speakers by using a, a, a common uh, structure. Uh, uh, sometimes less is more, so we didn't want to put zillions of, uh, of, uh, of um, uh, sentences. Sim the, the, the most important uh, elements uh, describing what the project was about. And once again, a key feature of uh, all of this project is they are candid. They are, I mean, Okay, a big word. They are honest. They, they're not trying to hide the, the, the difficulties. And uh, I'm sure in the Q&A uh, section, uh, you'll have a chance to maybe ask for uh, them to show, sh show you their, 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 their scars, the, the wounds they got along the way. Because again, as I said earlier, uh, elections, staff change, all of this, you as an entity have to adapt to make sure that the overall goal has been uh, uh, reached. So um, that's the uh, main um, object. Th th that's what the uh, GPG Good Practice Guide is 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 all about. I, I chose one, the, the Visa China, but uh, you'll see all of the other uh, good practices. Again, the six pilots are described in the same way, and you have references uh, for for learning more. Uh, Visa China. I mean, I didn't choose it by total accident. It's, um, remember the, one of the pictures that was shown in the very first presentation with, uh, with your uh, Welsh um, golf uh, team, the one who won the uh, Radius Club, Radius Cup, sorry. Um, Wales, of course, plays an, a key role in this project. They are the coordinator. And as far as e-crime is concerned, clearly Wales uh, is the initiator of this, of this, uh, of this uh, good practice. But just like the, um, the uh, golf uh, team, uh, the successful, successful one, the Dylan project, the Dylan partnership, you know, managed to uh, make, uh, uh, reach uh, an overall success altogether, uh, regardless of the difficulty that some of the partners uh, encountered along, along the way. So, results and uh, transfer transferability, sustainability, capacity to resist uh, to uh, normal life uh, issues. So, that's what the uh, GPG is about, and it ends with uh, this, what I call the uh, very uh, nine-step uh, uh, nine framework for deploying a uh, digital ecosystem that can, I believe, and I strongly believe, be followed by, by any region willing to uh, deploy a digital ecosystem. Not only think about it, but actually do it. So, to, to make that possible, uh, the next document is absolutely fundamental. It's the toolkit. It's, it's, it's a toolbox. It's a toolkit uh, made of um, uh, about 40 tools. 
Some of them were developed by the partners during the project. Some of them had been developed elsewhere in different projects. Uh, but all of them had been used by the different partners to make their uh, deployment uh, uh, success. So all of them have their medals. They have resisted to the, to the reality of, uh, of a real life uh, deployment. So these tools to me are um, very usable. They are uh, adaptable, they are uh, customizable, and all of them uh, make sense in uh, uh, following this step-by-step uh, -step nine, nine steps deployment roadmap. And again, we try to make it as, as logical, as easy to understand as possible by uh, following a very logical uh, flow correspondence. You have nine steps for this uh, deployment ro roadmap. Each step is described. Uh, for each step, there's a list of actual tools with explicit names, titles for them. And each tool corresponding to these nine steps is presented in a structured, again, less is more sometimes, in a very structured and standardized presentation, making it easy, I think, for any reader to um, uh, find out whether this particular tool makes sense at that particular moment in their own um, DE deployment uh, adventure. So uh, there are two um, things that can be also uh, derived from, this, from each of these uh, uh, tables. And there's a reference for learning more for those who want you know, to, to go beyond this particular table. And then, of course, the, uh, I mentioned these, um, earlier on the uh, an annex. Uh, the, the annex, again, that can be found in, uh, on, on, on the website, and every tool can be downloaded. Um, the annex contains uh, 35 out of the 40 tools. And this annex is made of uh, they can be uh, templates, they can be questionnaires, they can be uh, pieces of software, they can be uh, PowerPoint presentations, you know, how do you convince your boss that it makes sense? Well, these are the key messages to, to come across, to, to get across. So, uh, again, a very, it's non show off. I mean, there's n nothing has been done here to, to, to look particularly, uh, you know, uh, smart show off uh, uh, type of a. Uh, of an approach is very pragmatic, very bottom up. Each of them, each of these tools has been uh, used, tested, uh, had to uh, uh, face uh, real life issues. So I think that's quite uh, valuable. So this is the, um, you'll have access to this. Next, uh, Wayne, tomorrow? Yes. Yes, okay, as soon as tomorrow. Uh, so I really encourage you to, um, to uh, access uh, the toolkit, download it, and then take a look at uh, which tools make sense for your particular uh, project in your particular uh, region. Then third and uh, final document that uh, I will very briefly describe here today, uh, the summary of the final regional uh, reports. So, uh, you know, the title says it all. <laughs> That's a summary of the final regional reports. Uh, I think what's important uh, to remember here, or to, to stress here, uh, okay, again, six pilot actions out of an uh, initial list of 18, uh, all of them presented in a very structured way. Uh, and the, um, again, I'd like to, to stress the honesty, the candid, the lucid approach to this presentation, not trying to hide difficulties. Sometimes you learn more from your mistakes uh, than you learn from your uh, successes. So uh, I, I can assure you that um, this has been the uh, guiding line for uh, creating these, these uh, deliverables. The, the last uh, point to stress here is the uh, focus that was made on the reason why such projects, such, such pilot, uh, would be sustainable. We will we'll have this necessary re resilience. So that's. Um, Maybe something you, 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 you will want to uh, ask my colleagues a little bit later on during the Q&A session. Uh, why did they choose this particular uh, uh, evidence that these, their own project has potential for sustainability? In the documents, in the deliverables, we did our best to highlight that. So this is the way, again, a very uh, legible, very easy to, 
to read uh, a presentation very structured with always the same uh, 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 columns and then the same titles, the same, uh, uh, okay. So I'd like to, you know, I'm supposed to talk about, to present the, the final outcomes. Uh, I, I don't like the, the word final, uh, and I'd like to challenge it a little bit here. So these may be the final outcomes for uh, this particular incarnation of the, of the project, although uh, you have two weeks to uh, send remarks, give feedback to what you will have downloaded, so uh, that's something to keep in mind. You, you, you have the power to uh, uh, modify uh, a few things he here or there, so it's not final, final. And then, let's remember, uh, the a digital ecosystem, according to DLAN, that's made of uh, communities uh, who have here proved that they were able to collaborate and to adapt themselves to, uh, to the environment and its self-organization, scalability. So uh, our presence here today, their presence, our presence, the, uh, the, the viral dissemination that hopefully this event and the uh, uh, access to the, to the documents will, will create, all of this to me is uh, life Life after funding, you know, Commission loves when us reviewers have to do a review, uh, we will we'll, we'll always interrogate the life after funding issue. For me here, it's, non, it's a non-issue for, 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 for Dylan. Life, Dylan's life after funding is a non-issue. Of course, it will, it will continue to, to develop. I'm not even talking about the, uh, 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 answering the future uh, Interact 5C uh, program, but it's, uh, it's to me, it's, it's a given. These partners will continue collaborating. So it's not final. It, it won't be uh, final uh, by definition. Then the second reason why, to me, uh, it can't be uh, mentioned, uh, stated as a final outcome, uh, and that's a bit uh, overlapping what Martina says, but let's look at what's cooking at the, uh, at the Europe in, 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 in Brussels. Uh, that's a communication. Uh, a fairly recent one, um, you know, everything is not stabilized yet, but we start having a better and better idea of what the future, the next programming period will look like in 2014, 2020. Uh, and there are some profound changes. Uh, if you look at the whole picture of the, of the Europe uh, 2020 uh, policy, and I, I simply highlighted a few uh, elements, which to me are another evidence that uh, these are not final outcomes. These are significant steps, of course, yeah, that the project has to end at one, at one point of time to get its final payment, of course, but the, it, the, it, it, it life, uh, its life will, will continue in, in one way or the other. And what the Commission and the Parliament are, are, are divulging as, um, today is quite uh, interesting. I don't know if you're following this closely, but there are some, again, some, some profound changes. If you look at the, uh, at the Common Strategic Framework, the CSF, which include the structural funds, ERDF, ESF, and all uh, uh, the, the, and, and the three other uh, uh, programs, there are some, some uh, fundamental, some, not, some fairly uh, profound changes in, in, in the way these funds will be uh, um, balanced. Uh, it used to be such a time where ERDF was much better funded than ESF, European Social Funds. Well, this is going to change, and that's fundamental uh, to me anyway. The, uh, the Commission will uh, um, encourage um, uh, cohesive uh, uh, vision, I mean, uh, integrated vision, either at the uh, uh, global level strategy and at the very micro level project. So integrating ERDF and ESF is to me key. And I won't delve in too much into this, but the, the other piece which to me is, is, is quite important is that uh, next to the CSF major instrument you have the Horizon 2020 uh, policy which is um, made of uh, uh, the framework programs, the one which, which uh, push state of the art, and what you will see, if the Commission is to be trusted, if what you will see in the next programming period are um, bridges, uh, stronger bridges between the world of uh, state of the art, uh, let's push the state of the art, that is uh, FP 
maybe FP8 projects or CIP projects, and then the world of uh, structural funds projects, including uh, Interreg 4C. The, the reason being that uh, uh, you can't have, on one hand, uh, uh, great advances in state of the art, for instance, on uh, digital ecosystems, uh, which, re which invent the new tools for tomorrow, and on the other end of the spectrum, uh, social funds led projects which are using yesterday's projects. So I, 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 I can see a, a huge future in uh, Son of Dylan, Daughter of Dylan uh, for 2014-2020, taking full advantage of the new rules that the Commission will uh, soon uh, introduce and show us. So once again, thank you very much for uh, uh, having invited me. Again, feedback is more than welcomed. Uh, this is the address to which it should be sent before uh, the 25th. I said what, two weeks, I lied, it's only one week. Uh, you have one week to do your, your, your homework, I'm afraid. So all feedback should be sent to this particular address, uh, and you, this is your chance to uh, have an impact on uh, this uh, document. So, uh, Diolch, thank you very much, merci, and I hope to see you uh, somewhere else. Bye-bye.